Ми переходимо до доповіді Мартін Лігріс, доктор соціології, і вона інженер-дослідник університету Літл у Франції. Тема та ж, що і нам розказували Дарвін Кавальє, та ж Робин казала. Будь ласка, Мартін Лігріс. I think we are going to welcome our last lecturer, and uh, so I'm I'm pleased to to welcome Dr. Martin Legris, who is researcher at the Lille University in France, in the Center of Euro for European Research on Administration, Politics, and Society, the CERAPS. She also PhD from the University of Dauphine, in Paris, in sociology. And uh, Dr. Marin, Martin Legris is also an internationally well-known scholar in sociology. She's published in human science and active across the fields of participatory science, participatory democracy, industrial democracy, and critical research. She's a member of the board of the science shop of Lille University. So please, uh, Martin, uh, that's up to you. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, for inviting me to explain a bit what we are doing uh, in this science shop. So first, um, what's the science shop and why we are doing that? Uh, it's, uh, it started in 2016. And uh, the idea was that uh, inside the university, there were many researchers, but outside the university, there were also lots of people uh, wondering about several subjects that could be research questions and that we, uh, we may uh, build some kind of bridge between them. Can you show the next slide, please? Yeah. So we call it science with and for society because it also refers to a European uh, program uh, that occurred during several years and that also helps to make uh, citizen sciences, but also participatory research more known of uh, researchers as well as civil society. Next, please. So what's a science shop? Uh, it's a bit different from what uh, you heard before from uh, Darlene and, and Robin. It's different in the sense that we are not working only on uh, data uh, collection and uh, data analysis. We are really building projects that comes from civil society. So the, the initiative of the project comes from um, people who are not doing research usually, people from NGOs, grassroots, uh, inhabitants uh, of certain uh, cities around the universities, and so on. So they are coming to us because they are uh, asking themselves questions. Usually it's linked to what they are doing. And they think that some research could help find some solution on their problem, or at least could help them understand what is going on. So the science shop is uh, really the place where they can have an overview, and we try to translate what they are wondering about into a real research question, which is sometimes a bit long. To, to give you an idea from the start, when we receive the people and we discuss with them about the, the questions they want to get uh, involved in uh, with researchers. And uh, the start of the project, sometimes it's more than one year of discussion because we have to figure out what's really important, what can really be done inside uh, the, the academic community, find the right researchers, and then hire students, and then start the project. So. It's a long process, but it, it's useful to have this long process, and I'll explain why. So it's really tailored on demand, which means that each project is different, and uh, each project uh, also can be uh, in different areas uh, of research, as we in Lille have every researchers on every research area. So what's uh, the role of the science shop? We first get the the questions and the people who ask the questions, we meet them and then we organize the cooperation once uh, the project starts and then we guarantee uh, some conditions between the participants in order for them to get involved in a fair project. So I will explain what we are meaning by a fair project. Can you show the next slide, please? 
so um, we are using a methodology called participatory action research. It's coming from Canada and uh, it's, it's starting to get a bit known in Europe, but it's not really uh, already mastered by a lot of people. Uh, this methodology helps us to really engage with the people as a group. So it's a collective. Salut, David. Ça va et toi? And uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is also um, a methodology that can help uh, bring in different kinds of knowledge. Knowledge coming from uh, people and knowledge coming from the researchers and uh, trying to get them uh, together uh, with a fair view, which means that there is no um, dom domination from the researchers upon the methodology or upon the project itself, which is sometimes difficult without a proper facilitation device. So we, we also uh, uh, work on the facilitation and also we work on the dissemination of the results of the project. Can you show the next slide, please? So you can see a picture of the place we are working in. And uh, uh, we have built uh, different, uh, different collaborations. And we have also worked on a charter. So uh, the people we are addressing is not everybody in the civil society. We are mostly addressing not-for-profit organizations people who are uh, far away from uh, scientific uh, research and uh, who are uh, willing to uh, share the results in open uh, manners. So uh, there is no brevet or whatever you like to protect uh, the, the, research, the research results. As far as I know, we have been able to do that in every of our projects. So our own structure, our own organization is built on peer-to-peer -peer relationships. We have uh, a, a scientific committee, including researchers and civil society organizations. And also we have uh, an executive committee. I'm part of the board. And inside this executive committee, committee, you have also researchers and civil society. Show the next slide, please. So what, why is it important, in fact, now to have those kind of structures called science shops? It's mainly because we have uh, several, uh, well, say, progress uh, in the academic sphere. So we have already talked about citizen sciences and the fact that uh, researchers are really happy to get uh, supported by citizen scientists and also to get more data, more information for them to build their analysis. But there is also expertise built by CSOs themselves and NGOs themselves that can be very interesting. There is also lots of production of knowledge coming from civil society. And we also know that uh, there are local specific issues that cannot be dealt with without any contextual um, situation, contextual research. So this is what some uh, researchers call uh, community-based research, but it's also the idea that uh, um, it's difficult uh, for people who are living a, a, a problematic situation to refer to uh, the, the literature or to refer to experts and uh, find out how can they uh, translate it into their own context. So the idea is that we are really working with them in real conditions, in their own settings, in their own, uh, in their own organizations, if needed. And of course, as we said also before, there is a lot of uh, interesting uh, developments in open science, open data, and uh, everything that uh, helps people to get uh, more information and uh, more knowledge about uh, different topics. Please, next slide. So in France, we also had a lot of uh, policy uh, support and policy reports in the last years promoting participatory science. Uh, but <laughs> the minus is that uh, uh, there is no, uh, there is seldom budget dedicated to it, so it's a bit of a problem. I I'll come back to that later. 
Next, please. So as I said, we're starting in 2016, and as we are willing to uh, um, drive our projects in a collaborative way, but also a very strong collaborative way, because we think it's a co-creation, and that the initiative is not from the researchers, but from the people from the civil society. Uh, we also uh, worked on our own values and our on, on the ethics side uh, of the research. And I think it's very, very important uh, for different reasons. One of the main one is that uh, you have to build trust between people who do not know each other and they, they will have to work together uh, knowing that uh, they have different understanding of the situation and that also they do not share the same kind of curriculum. So uh, they really need to be uh, confident and uh, that uh, they trust each other. The second main reason is uh, about legitimacy. Uh, doing research when you're not a professional researcher is not uh, really easy. So you sometimes have to gain in legitimacy and uh, this is one of the value we are working on uh, in the panel. Next, please. Uh, this is what we are mainly doing. Uh, so the most import important part maybe is that we are giving a low cost access to the knowledge and scientific research. It doesn't imply a lot of uh, time and it doesn't cost a lot of money uh, to uh, the people who are willing to engage in this kind of project because we are financing the project. So they only have to give the time and some bite of energy, but it's not uh, so difficult for them. And uh, we are really facilitating as much as we can uh, during all the process. Next, please. So who's doing what inside the science shop? So you see that we are a team centered on facilitation and uh, bridging people with each other. Then you have the people who have been asking for the research projects or coming from civil society. So you, usually they are uh, hoping to get some results, but also they are willing to get some arguments and some uh, new knowledge about the situation, then, then they can uh, uh, disseminate and use as, uh, as a structure in different kind of uh, of this, this different kind of arena. Uh, we have students, uh, so they are really very happy uh, to take part in those projects because uh, first uh, it's uh, very uh, effective and uh, they can see uh, how what they are doing is really uh, helping and uh, improving some situations. And of course, in their professional uh, curriculum, it's also very uh, valued. And the third one are the, the, the researchers who are uh, tutoring the students. For them, it's also interesting because uh, they learn about uh, civil society organizations they don't know yet. They get access to some data or some uh, information they would not be able to get without the project. And of course, for us, for us it's very important uh, to uh, help our students to find interesting projects and interesting missions. Uh, so that's a win-win situation. Next, please, because I see that my time is almost done. Uh, this is about the financial uh, part of, of the science shop. So you can see that uh, the budget is uh, not so large. Uh, it's a small budget. It's allocated by Lille University but it's also located by uh, la Maison Européenne des Sciences Humaines et Sociales. So it's, a, it's a network of uh, social sciences houses. And there is also a part coming from the metropolitan area uh, who is supporting the science shop. So we have uh, around 6,000 euros for each short project, which means around six months. It's for master students. So they have those six, mo six months dedicated to a specific uh, research project. We also have now um, longer projects. It just started to 
work. So we are experiencing it. It's a two years project. And uh, we are around seven projects a year. So it's not many projects because it takes a lot of time to facilitate and organize. And uh, we also have uh, been lucky to uh, convince the University of Lille to launch a call on participatory research. And this call is uh, in place since uh, two years now. And it's, uh, it's uh, really nice because we see that uh, researchers are interested in it. And we are also organizing training stations, training stations for PhDs, training stations for researchers, and training stations dedicated to the project teams, so civil society organizations, students, and researchers, to help them understand what it means to work together and what it means to do participatory uh, research and to give them some tools to be autonomous as much as possible in, uh, in the way. So thank you very much for your attention. Шановні колеги, я звертаюсь до наших іноземних спікерів. Тіберіус. Dear colleagues from abroad. Тіберіус Робін, Мартін, Рафаела, Сара, Розі. В нас ще є питання, але ми не можемо, вже дуже перебрали час і потрібно людям 20 хвилин перерви. We have, we have lots of questions to you, but as we are a little bit delayed, uh, so we will propose the following. Чи можете ви затриматись на 20 хвилин, а потім дати відповіді на декілька запитань? Бо це дуже важливо. Will you, uh, are you able to uh, really contact us in 20 minutes after a short break? Це важливо, тому що бюджети наукові в усіх університетах України скорочені. It's important, uh, given that all uh, budget, all uh, financing is much limited now in Ukraine. А uh, так я розумію, ваша платформа SciStarter, вона дозволяє бібліотеці рекомендувати, де можна взяти або залучити людей і взяти дані для проведення ваших досліджень. Тому, якщо ви не возражаєте, ми підключимося через 20 хвилин. So if you, uh, would you mind our switching over in 20 minutes, please? Uh, I, I think I can, but just for five or 10 minutes maximum, but I can, I have more time if we uh, go back in 15 minutes. So it's, it's up to you, but if you just 10 minutes, it's 20 minutes pause, and then I have 10 minutes to discuss, but I have to leave there at okay. 12, I think. Rafaela, я трошки занотувала виступи твоїх колег. I have uh, written some notes uh, from the reports of your colleagues. Чи правильно я зрозуміла поняття громадянська наука? Uh, did I understand the concept of citizen science correctly? Громадянська наука – це активна участь громадськості. Citizen science means active participation of community. В дослідницькій діяльності. In scientific research. За допомогою її інтелектуального потенціалу, часу або інших ресурсів by helping with uh, potential time, resources, everything. Is that correct? Yes, uh, it is correct. Uh, but I think that we can um, amplify the perspective uh, because um, citizen science is about, yes, participation of uh, inhabitants to scientific projects, but it can be just collecting uh, data, but it also can be about co-constructing the problem and the problematic of a research project. Uh, it can have a lot, it's, a, it's all a continuum of participation. Maybe uh, you want to translate? Ага. 
Тобто, чи, чи правильно я зрозуміла посил спікерів щодо того, що представляє із себе цей стартер? В умовах, коли в університетах дуже обмежені фінансові можливості для проведення досліджень, research, в зв'язку з військовим станом, uh, current, uh, law, бібліотеки університетів можуть допомогти цьому по-перше. Uh, uh, libraries from universities can help this uh, can help in the following way. Тим, що розкажуть про платформу, міжнародну платформу SiteStarter, де де є вже якісь діючі проекти з певних галузей знань. By introducing SiteStarter platform that illustrates and has some implemented projects regarding citizen science. Або запропонувати і допомогти дослідникам внести свій проект на цю платформу. Or suggest that researchers include their projects uh, on this platform. А друге, друге, друга позиція бібліотекарів Знайти в межах свого кампусу або в межах свого району, регіону тих людей, які зможуть допомагати в громадянській науці. науці. And another aspect of library activities to find people, a community among the or on campus or in the community who can help promote the concept of citizen science. Okay, uh, maybe I, I will I, I will intervene because I have to leave at 12 because the library is opening at 12. So no, sorry. No, so uh, I, I think there is okay sorry I think there is two things. The first the first thing is size starter is more about facilitating um the place where connecting uh, science to citizens. So for example, they provide uh, some uh, kits to do um, citizen science uh, for public libraries, or they organize relations between uh, public library and uh, uh, university library with uh, some research projects. So that's the first point. And the second point, maybe you want to translate? Сайт Стартер – это больше платформа для того, чтобы облегчить поиск проекта Citizen Science, разъяснение об этих проектах, для того, чтобы можно было получить информацию о том, что такое Citizen Science. Это больше ресурс для того, чтобы объяснить, облегчить поиск проекта. And the second point is that um, Citizen Science uh, how library can help for citizen science, academic library. I think there is different position on this. Sure, there is the question of community. If a library is open only to students and not to citizens, it's not helping uh, for uh, giving access to science for citizens. That's the first point. And second point with uh, open science and uh, my colleague, Sarah, uh, we, we will be the perfect person to speak about this, but uh, open science is, uh, is giving a uh, opportunities to to think about how the library wants to give access to publication scientific publication but also data research data and to think about if i did if i give access to this what are the perfect tools for that is the catalog the perfect tools or do we have to invent to create some new tools to help access to this kind of I, I call that scientific traduction of science. So uh, the, this is the question. Yeah. Okay. 
А вот по open science аспект, о котором мы будем говорить, по открытой науке, о которой мы будем чуть позже говорить, это, это как раз поиск проекта, поиск того, как сделать исследовательские проекты более прозрачными, более понятными, как облегчить их вообще существование. Угу. Все. Рафаэла, щиро дякую. Щиро дякую за участие. Thank you. I'm so sorry I have to leave, but the, the library is opening. I, I wish you all the best and thank you very much for giving us possibility to discuss with you and do not hesitate to contact us later. Thank you okay. very much. Okay, Шановні колеги, це була Рафаїла Бат, доктор університету зараз, зараз, Бордо, Франція, відділ бібліотека і документації. Я би хотіла знов таки трошки-трошки наголосити і передам потім слово для модерування Оксані Бруй, що в нас дуже великий потенціал науковий в цьому плані, тому що є багато пенсіонерів-науковців, які бажають, в них є такі, знаєте, ну, ідеї цікаві, в них є можливість займатися недалеко від дому тією чи іншою діяльністю. Тому саме бібліотеки, якщо ми займемося і відключимося до європейських, до загальносвітових проєктів громадської науки, вони будуть надзвичайно перспективними. I'd like to emphasize one aspect. Uh, we have, uh, while talking about uh, the role of uh, university libraries uh, regarding citizen science, we have uh, a, large uh, a large community of retired scientists uh, who are willing to participate, to get involved in our uh, activities. So if we engage them in our activities, that will do a great favor because they have, well, lots of interesting proposals. Uh... Щиро дякую.